Hello, PlatformCon, and welcome to PlatformCon 2022. I really hope you're enjoying the talks and having fun. My name is Chris Vermeulen, and today I'm going to be talking to you about composable platforms and how I've experimented with them over the last couple of months. If during my talk you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me on the Slack, on the in Platform Engineering Slack. My talk today is listed under the Platform Tech track. Um, it also plays a little bit into the Platform Design track, but it mainly focuses on the tech I've used to experiment. Therefore, I've put it under the Platform Tech track. Um, so today we're talking about composable platforms. What do I mean by composable platforms? If you think about microservices today, whether those are Node.js, Python, or Golang microservices, the first thing most people do is create a directory, and not long afterwards, the first package is installed, whether it's for an HTTP server, a router, a formatted logging package, anything like that. Software is shared through libraries and tooling, so any developer looking to share capability can easily do so. Common platforms lack this capability, or if it's supported, it takes a myriad of tooling to achieve. Composable platforms are the same idea, just applied to platforms. Take Kubernetes, for example. Companies usually provide a Kubernetes environment augmented through namespaces, network policies, security context, and a bunch of other features to create isolated environments for developers to do their best work. As developer teams grow or capabilities expand, businesses attract more attention, this Kubernetes environment usually needs to expand to adapt for higher computing needs. In the past couple of years, I've worked with platform teams managing and maintaining Kubernetes platforms anywhere from a couple dozen nodes to a couple thousand node clusters. But high adoption of these platforms creates problems for the platform teams that provide these platforms. Some of the big problems I've seen platform teams face include generalization of services, where services provided are generic so that all teams can use them, but that removes the bespokeness of certain tooling for certain teams that need them. The platforms also need to scale based on outside traffic. Based on the services they serve, these platforms need to scale. And scale is not something I like to think about when building platforms. Change one, change all methodologies. That's basically for operators or services that's provided, is provided for one service, and then all of the others need to use that capability in the way that that service wanted it. Upgrades usually are very involved and hands-on, take a lot of time, because everything needs to be considered when doing upgrades. Things like daemon sets or node-specific things need to be taken into account, and all of the services involved in that are also taken into account, and that can make it quite difficult. When new regions are deployed, they take a long time to repair and adopt. New regions take plenty of work to install all of the different things, integrate them, and companies often mix concerns between these bunch of things, and that takes a longer time to create new regionalized clusters or environments. Experimenting is increasingly difficult to contain as well. If you want to experiment with some new tooling, that's quite difficult to do in a big platform like that, especially if it's intrusive tooling, like security tooling that digs into applications or service meshes, which add sidecars. Disaster containment is really difficult to handle. If a disaster occurs in, a, in Kubernetes, it could affect all of the services running on top of that platform. Teams who need to provide their own platform services also often struggle to do so because they don't have access rights and Platform teams don't trust other teams to deploy stuff on those platforms because they might be quite fragile. Uh, and testing of new tools in production environments are quite risky, risky for ob obvious reasons. Composable platforms as an idea help solve this in some way. What do I mean by composable platforms then? Composable platforms are essentially platforms where the platform itself and the services provided by platform teams are provided not as running services, but rather as installable appliances in smaller platforms or environments. Platform teams can package all or most of the appliances they provide as installable packages, leaving it up to the teams to decide where and how they'd like to run their platform and the services on that platform based on their contextual needs. As an example, take Kubernetes. There's a big cap catalog of availability of available Kubernetes distributions, default Kubernetes, OpenShift, K3S, MicroKates. Some distributions require platform teams to set up secure security from the start. Others come pre-installed with all the security features, sometimes overwhelming the, the, the users of that platform. What I've tried to do is package my best practice ideas or concepts that I learned a long time 
in Terraform modules, which I can then apply to certain environments and create environments faster. And so it's almost a sort of modular approach to Kubernetes clusters and platforms. For example, if I need the platform to have the highest security settings, I create a Terraform module with all of my security knowledge packaged in one place, and I can then install that cleanly into Kubernetes environments and reuse that later if I need the same requirements in a new environment. Just like you would install a framework library into your microservice, you can install configurations or capabilities into your Kubernetes environments based on specific needs of the teams who are going to use that environment. I've applied the same thing to tooling such as Prometheus or the Elk stack, where I configure the operators or the services I need, how I need them, and how I want to use them, and then package up the configurations in Terraform modules and, include in future and easily include them in future clusters if I do need the same thing again. In reality, that sort of looks like this. I can create a Kubernetes cluster, and I can install all the specific components that I need for that cluster. I could also include things like documentation, run books, troubleshooting guides, and anything else folks might need in order to run their application with those services in mind. You might be wondering why I wouldn't provide these packages as Helm packages. The primary reason I like to use Terraform is so that I can have the same workflow outside of Kubernetes. For example, creating private Lambda environments with API gateways, logging, subnets, VPCs, IAM policies, and all of the other things that, I need to be, that need to be configured for a private Lambda environment. I can create a common secure framework for Lambda services and publish that as a Terraform module, which I can later use to streamline any services with similar constraints. There's a lot of tooling available for this sort of stuff. The original inspiration for this came from the KubeStack framework. It provides pre-configured Kubernetes environments for most of the big clouds and provides a catalog of common operators and tooling which can be installed as appliances into those Kubernetes clusters. For environments which are outside of Kubernetes, those are, there are also other tools which provide the same sort of capability, such as HashiCorp Nomad or Humanitech. Humanitech has also hinted that they have built a Terraform driver that integrates with the internal developer platform and will make that available soon. So keep an eye out for that. It's unfortunately not all good news, though, and it's not a perfect solution in all situations. Distributed platforms using this method have some side effects that you need to be aware of before you dive in. Your compute will be more distributed for disaster recovery or troubleshooting, and if you do disaster recovery or troubleshooting or security things, it might take additional effort as they have to work with contextualized environments unless they were integrated and involved in those earlier in the process. You might be running more than you need for many teams as well. Some tools can manage more than just a couple teams, and distributing too much might create some problems of resource consumption down the line, and you might need to centralize some, of some capabilities, thinking of SAML or LDAP or anything like that. You'll need to apply some contextualized knowledge in order to make the best decisions based on your, your environment and the decisions you have to make. But there are some advantages I found. Bespoke tooling can be given and tested in isolated environments covering just the relevant teams and then distributed again for others to use if necessary. The environments are generally less volatile. If something happens to one application, that doesn't filter over into other applications. Platforms can be quite opinionated when you use them, so you can opinionate them based on the things that run there. Thinking about telcos, for example, who have special networking requirements, you don't have to apply those network requ networking requirements to all of the services running there. Outages are also naturally limited to specific functions. Outages in one cluster, DNS, for example, doesn't affect all of the other clusters. It's just in one cluster. Platforms can be opened up for experimentation to a wider group of people more comfortably and more easily. People can experiment with new tooling without needing to worry about affecting other services running on that platform. Upgrades are me much easier to reason about when you think about the amount of services running on them. You don't have to think of such a wide context. It's a much smaller set of things you have to take into account when working on upgrades. And then knowledge can be distributed and best practices can be built in. This is especially true for teams outside a Kubernetes environment as well. It's really hard to distribute knowledge across all of those different teams, but these Terraform modules make it pretty easy to do that. Best practice installations can be distributed in open source if you really want to. For infrastructure-specific things, I'm not too sure how 
teams feel about that regarding security, but you can technically do them that way. And then there's a place for centralized knowledge and iteration. You have the same places to work on the same things, iterate them, improve them, and then share them amongst everybody. That's the idea that I have behind composable platforms and how I've tested them in the past. If you have any opinions, please reach out to me on the Platform Engineering Slack channel. You can reach out to me on Twitter at Lone Developer as well. My website is chris-vermeulen.com if you want to go read some of the stuff I've written before. Um, come share your opinions. Talk to me. Let's talk about what I've spoken about today and the idea. And let me know how you feel about it. Or if you dissent from that and want to share your opinion with me, feel free. Until we see each other again, auf Wiedersehen. Bye.